We have a vision from Peter this morning found in Acts, and it's Acts 11, verses 1 to 18, found on page 977 of your pew Bibles. Hear now the words of Peter, and it's an opening for us. Now the disciples and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, saying, You went into the uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter explained it to them in order from the beginning, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, an object descending like a great sheep let down from heaven by four corners, and it came to me. When I observed it intently and considered, I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Now this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house who said to him, Send men to Joppa. And call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. And then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was that I could withstand God. When they heard these things, they became silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. We go onward and upward, on to page 559, where we will responsibly go to Psalm 148. And Psalm 148 is such a psalm of praise, a psalm of joy, and a psalm just meant to share your love of God. So let us now uh, responsibly say Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise, praise Him all His angels. Praise, praise Him all His angels. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, you stars of light. Praise Him, you heavens of heavens, and His glory is above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. He also established them forever and ever. He made a decree which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures, and all the depths. Fire and hail, snow and clouds, storm and winds, fulfilling His word. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things of mind and power. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and judges of the earth. Oh, young men and kings, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and the heaven. And he is exalted the Lord's people. Praise of all his saints. Lord indeed. We now go to John 13, verses 31 to 35, found on page 955 of your pew Bibles. And this, this is Jesus giving us our job description. John writes, so when he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in Him. 
If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. Little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now, O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Once upon a time, there was a business person named Pat. The commute to work each morning was long. By the time Pat arrived in the office, her temper was just about at the breaking point. That's never happened to you, has it? Well, this morning was especially bad. It seems that on the commute, traffic was incredible, and the breaking point was reached. Pat had started out okay, but the lines were long, and the drivers were constantly in the way. You've been there. A little old lady jumps into the passing lane, and Pat had some choice words for her. <laughs> She pulled out and passed her on the right, and just as soon as she passed the lady, a huge tractor trailer got out of the climbing line and got right in front of her. Ugh. She had a breakdown to 45, and hitting the limit of her patience, she let the driver know her displeasure by a certain hand gesture. <laughs> Finally, the traffic slowed to a crawl. Because some frick of frack of rock of fuck of rock of rick of idiot had blown a tire and stopped to fix it, and they were uh, rubbernecking in both ways. Pat pounded on the steering wheel, knowing that she had a meeting with her supervisors and she was going to get there late. It wasn't enough. Because just as soon as the backlog cleared, you know what happened. <laughs> what now? It was getting later and later. The officer came to the window and in, their, in his own inimitable way, very slowly, license and registration. Pat asked what the problem was as she went over her commute in her head and she couldn't figure out what she'd done wrong. She asked the officer what, it, what she had done to deserve a ticket. Didn't the cop have anything better to do? Why didn't he get out and go arrest a real criminal? <laughs> the officer very gently told her that he had been following her for some time, had observed the gesturing, the cursing, the pounding on the steering wheel, but he'd also noticed the fish symbol on the back of the car <laughs> and assumed that the car had been stolen. <laughs> this is big time, big deal stuff. You know, it's really easy to come here on a Sunday morning and be Christians. And you know, I love Sunday mornings. It's it's a time when we get to be together, we, we come together to worship Jesus in a sanctuary that's so beautiful and worshipful, we can feel the presence of God here. Sometimes during the week, I come over here and I just sit and bask knowing that God is in the house. I can only imagine how wonderful it was for the disciples to actually be in the presence of Jesus. Not only how inspiring it would have been, but it's really, really easy to play follow the leader, isn't it? When Jesus healed, the disciples healed. When Jesus taught, the disciples taught. When he prayed, 
So did they. But you know what? Following Jesus gets a little bit more difficult when there's nobody right here to follow. The great thing is that Christ didn't leave us on our own to find our own way. He says to practice, practice, practice. Love one another as I have loved you. But you ever try to define love? A man once spoke to a group of high schoolers about the idea of love. He said, somebody define love. Nothing. Doesn't anybody want to try? Nothing. He says, I'll tell you what. I define, I'll define it. And if you agree, raise your hand. There were nods all around. He says, all right. Love is that feeling you get when you meet the right person. Hmm. Every hand went up. This is how many people approach the idea of love. Consciously or unconsciously, but they believe it's a sensation or a feeling based on physical and emotional attraction that magically, spontaneously generates when the right person appears. And many just as easily, since they believe this is love, have found that it can spontaneously de degenerate when the magic just isn't there. You fall in love, and you fall out of love. But we can learn about love just as Christ did. Christ simply chose love. Sounds almost ridiculously easy, doesn't it? In order to love the way that Jesus did, we have to take his example and simply choose to do it. We don't have to get innovative. We don't have to get creative. All we have to do is choose to love the same way that he did. Is that something you want to do? Is that something that you want to do? That's the question. God showed people how much he loved us by acting in a world through prophets, through creation, all through the biblical narrative, God shows how much he loves us. When that wasn't enough, he sent Christ into the world to redeem it. God chose to love us and proved it by his actions. Then Jesus did the same thing. He showed it by his actions. There was no talk about who we should love, how much we should love, or how to love. Love one another as I have loved you. Simple, straightforward, not confusing. You may be sitting there saying, yeah, we can do that. We do do that. Uh, the question I want you to think about today is, do you do that? I'm not sure that's such an easy one to answer, and I'm going to be perfectly honest. No, I don't. I don't do it as well as Jesus does it. I can read the gospel stories, and I can admit that some part of me, I want to keep in reserve. Loving as completely as Jesus gives me the impression that it would use up all of myself, it would cut down, and there would be nothing left. You know what? I don't want to do that. Because I need to look out for number one, too. It's difficult to love completely unless you are loved completely. It's a challenge to love. We each have to learn that over and over again. When the early church was formed, when you, when you hear stories about the Holy Spirit informing the church. The Holy Spirit ran amok. From the original 12, he appeared to 3,000, and they joined the church. The people saw something that they wanted. They saw God's love in those crazy Christians. The people wanted to change from what they were to what they saw. There was just something different about Christians. 
It wasn't their birth, it wasn't their money, it wasn't their power, it was their love. It was their respect for life and how they helped other people. They saw community, they saw love, they saw faith, they saw risk taking. They saw a kind of power and joy that doesn't exist without the presence of the Holy Spirit. How does one just get to have this attraction to others? How does a group of simple fishermen and common folk add 3,000 to their number in one day? They have decided to love. We have to decide to allow the Holy Spirit to help us love totally, completely, and unquestioningly. We have to love big. We have to let people see us take a loving stand. <coughs> Make no mistake about it. This whole loving is a tough thing to do. It's much easier to ignore others and go on about our business. It's much easier to talk the talk without walking the walk. But love is a decision that we must make as Christians. We're not given a choice from our scripture today. We have to love by giving, love by caring, love by working. We crazy Christians need to show our difference to the world. We need to make our love as obvious as the washing of feet. We need to get off our butts and be obvious about our love. Even if others take advantage of us, even if we get hurt, even if we take risks, even if, even if, even if. We can't love in silence. We can't love simply among ourselves. Our love has to shine like a spotlight in a world filled with darkness. If we don't love, if we choose to remain within our shells, if we don't care for the world as Christ has taught us to do, we become marooned. <laughs> Todd, you need to go? <laughs> we become empty. We become alone. Instead of taking, we need to give. It's that easy. Giving is such a foreign idea in a take-all-you-can-get world. You know what? We send our kids to business school where they can graduate, get into a six-figure income on Wall Street. We send them into the world to be prepared to take care of themselves and perhaps their families. What would the world be like if we sent them into the world to care for others? We can't know how to love until we find out how Jesus loved. He was the perfect model of love, and it's love is not a feeling. Love is an action. In your Christian journey, would people know you're a Christian by how you act? Do you make it obvious to every person around you you're acting on your Christian values? Does everybody at work and in town know you're a Christian, know you're a follower of Jesus by how you act? Could you do better? Could you choose to love one another? We wonder how to grow this church, how to have more kids come in, how to be the hands and feet of Christ here in Plymouth. The answer to the whole question is to love. Let your love shine among the people here in Plymouth. Let it be obvious. Let the people see how much you care about them, how much you care about your town, how much you love each and every person because they are a child of God. If we choose to dedicate our lives to loving others, we will be following Christ. I have hopeful news for you, though. You don't need to be Father or Mother Teresa. You don't have to make a radical shift in character. All right, most of you don't have to make a radical shift in character. You don't have to jump off the precipice suddenly to become someone that you're not. I don't think anyone expects that. Rather, loving is a learned trait. Loving one another can come in a lot of different flavors. How about just for a start? Next time somebody pulls in the fast lane doing 45, don't assume that they did it just to slow you down and inconvenience you, that you need to have a personal vendetta against this idiot. Simply know 
that this idiot, who you love, may be having a particularly bad day or a difficult life decision to make. Perhaps their child just found out they've got a large medical problem to deal with. Perhaps someone in their family just passed away. We truly have no idea the burdens everybody is carrying. Could be any one of a thousand things that are causing this person to make the decision that you wish they hadn't made. Showing your love for others may simply be thinking the best of others rather than the worst. It's that simple. When you get home from work and dinner isn't ready on the table, don't jump to conclusions that your partner, spouse, or significant other is lazy and thoughtless. Simply realize that other things may have taken priority so that you can take the initiative to cook dinner. You won't waste valuable time about fighting. You will make time better by loving. Just try it the next time a situation comes up, any situation comes up. Give people the benefit of a doubt. In the back of your mind, love that person. It will give you a new sense of what it means to be a follower of Christ. There's one thing that you have to admit. Christ cared. It showed in everything he said, everything he did. You can learn to care just a little Perhaps even work your way up to a lot. As a matter of fact, set your goal for this week, this week coming, just to think kindly about a person you wouldn't ordinarily think kindly about. Maybe the cop who makes a traffic stop, the co-worker who has irritated you for years, the professor that gives you a C, or the pastor that tells you something you disagree with. Think the best of people. And I think it will boomerang, and you feel good about yourself as well. Surprisingly, there may be some people who don't harbor the best thoughts about you. They can feel better. Loving people as Christ loved them begins with the first step, making a decision to love. It's as easy as deciding what color socks to buy. As a matter of fact, it's easier. You don't have to choose from 354 colors or patterns. You just have to decide whether or not to love. What it looks like from there is up to you. But start with your attitude. Know that each person is loved by God no matter who they are. And if God can choose to love them, you can choose to love them too. Try it. Try it. Just for something different, just something for this week, choose to love the people who you run into, who you work with, <coughs> who you see. Those people are children of God. Those people are loved by God. And if you don't think you can do it, do the same thing Jesus did. Practice. Practice. And practice some more. Let us sing. Let us sing, we will glorify. Oh no, let us sing, come that we may love the Lord. No.